Hi everyone, it's Halo 4 Tutor with another Halo 4 gameplay commentary. As always, I'm bringing you my signature tips and tricks to help you start winning more often and having a lot more fun while you're doing it. One of the most popular playlists in Halo 4 multiplayer is of course the Big Team Infinity Slayer Big Team Battle. And the most popular map in Big Team Infinity Slayer is Ragnarok. So I decided I'd, I'd do a video on this map. And most of the previous videos I've done in this playlist on this map have been from the blue perspective, which I prefer. Uh, I tend to have better games on the blue side. I think that they have a slight advantage, at least um, for, for my style of gameplay. Uh, but I haven't done any, any videos from the red perspective, so I wanted to do one for you. Keep a close eye out here. I can't see the Banshee on screen, but I see it coming on the radar. I just hold down that right trigger. I'm able to get a Skyjack, a Malay attack, and a First Strike medal to start the game off. Pretty, pretty good start. And I have been able to hijack a lot of vehicles where I kind of see them coming on the radar. Even if I don't see them on the screen, I just hold down that right trigger, or not the right trigger, like the right bumper. And I've been able to skyjack a lot of banshees who are unsuspecting. Uh, don't don't think I see them coming, but I use that radar, and as soon as they get too close, I'm able to uh, skyjack them relatively easily. Now I should have jumped out before I was killed here. I mean, the, the banshees in Halo Forge are simply made out of paper mache. They're they're not very durable, and so once they start to smoke and flame, you're better off just jumping out, in my opinion. Uh, you know. If it's a it's a if it's a fully healthy banshee, don't hesitate to jump in and, and try to do some damage. But once it starts to smoke and flame and things like that, uh, you may want to consider bailing out because they're just not as durable as they used to be in previous game games. Um, but they they can still be very effective at at full strength. Uh, additionally, if you're using the wheelman loadout, that that does help improve the durability of your vehicles very significantly. Uh, the wheelman loadout has actually become one of my favorites. I use it very often uh, when playing Big Team Battle. I mean, it's fantastic in the um, the, the Banshee. It's fantastic in the the Mech. It's fantastic. Um, you know, even driving the Warthogs around, it's very helpful. In the tank, it's helpful. Uh, not only does it really increase the durability of your vehicles substantially, but also it reduces the amount of time that your vehicles are stunned, and so that helps quite a bit as well. Um, anytime you get stunned with a plasma pistol, usually your, your vehicles recover extremely quickly and you're able to escape, uh, oftentimes before your opponents have an opportunity to hijack you or, you know, stick you with a plasma grenade or something like that. In this particular game, uh, I'm loading out with the active camouflage, uh, and the DMR here, as well as the AA efficiency and ammo. Uh, I really like this combination. It's kind of my go-to on the big team maps. I know a lot of people don't like it. They think it's kind of a cheap loadout, and uh, you know they think it's uh, a lot of people just don't like it. But I find it to be extremely effective, and so I use it frequently. Uh, you know that active camouflage uh, is great on these big maps, where you can kind of uh, stay hidden as best as possible. Meanwhile, you have pinpoint accuracy with your with your DMR there. You can get really long range shots uh, on any big map. And that AA efficiency helps you recharge your active camouflage quickly. Now here I'm not paying enough attention. I'm going to poke my head out one too many times. I'm just asking for a binary rifle to the face here and I get it. I thought maybe uh, that active camo was cloaking me a little bit better than it actually was. The trick with, with, the, red, uh, with the red spawn is that uh, it's difficult to gain control or maintain control of that down pelican over there. That that pelican is really a very powerful position and it's very difficult to uh, really put pressure on that position from anywhere on the red side. Really the best way to uh, <laughs> lousy grenade throwing there. Uh, the best way to push the pelican uh, well it's difficult to push the pelican. Let me just say that. Uh, from the red side it's difficult to push the pelican because they're able to fall back very easily behind the pelican and it, it's difficult to get there additionally if you know you do want to push the pelican you have to cross a lot of empty open area where you have no cover and that can be very difficult as well here I'm able to stun this ghost and he foolishly jumps out fortunately for me he jumps out because I didn't have anything to stick him with I was out of grenades but he just jumps out and I'm able to, to kill him um, I'm gonna come into the base here and drop down my saw and I'm gonna use the saw throughout uh, a uh, large portion of the game here. The saw is just quickly becoming, 
you know, one of my favorite weapons. Always has been, but I'm beginning to like it more and more as I've continued to master this burst shooting method with the saw. This burst shot just works extremely well. It just melts your enemy's shield so, so quickly. It's absolutely ludicrous. And if you have the um, dexterity loadout, uh, the saw can recharge or uh, basically reload very, very quickly. So that, that can be a very helpful loadout when you're using the saw as well. I don't think I have that here, but in this case, it's, it's not going to be terribly urgent to reload quickly. And the other thing I've found with the uh, burst shooting method is you don't have to reload quite as often. You know, you can get two, three, four kills out of a single load. Look at me just using this burst shooting, take down that ghost no problem at all, very quickly. And I'm able to fall back to cover and, and easily uh, take that extra time to reload. Now, uh, with with the red with the red strategy, what I do like, what I do recommend doing is controlling the uh, the center hill here, because of course from the center hill you can look down on the blue side of the map. You have excellent visibility, and you can get a lot of uh, open shots from the top of the hill. The trouble is there's not a ton of cover at the top of the hill, so you do need to make use of whatever cover is available. You can see here I'm choosing not to go to the crest of the hill. I'm kind of poking around the side. The trouble with this is, is it's somewhat exposed to the pelican, so I'm, I'm using the trees for cover as best as I can. So uh, the trees can give you some cover from the pelican. Additionally, the trees can give you cover from the blue spawn, the blue base area. So you want to use the trees for cover as best as you can. Also, there's a rock kind of up at the crest of the hill towards the left-hand side somewhat. You want to use that rock for cover as best as you can. You can see it right there in the screen. So don't just stand up at the top of the hill looking down into the blue base because I guarantee you're going to get sniped or shot. Uh, it's a very exposed area at the crest of the hill. and You don't want to just stand up here. You want to kind of fall back behind the hill a little bit uh, or use kind of the rocks and the trees for cover. So I've got a frenzy here. Pretty good start to the game. Not doing too bad. Again, just uh, trying to control the top of the hill with this saw because uh, it, it's most efficient kind of at medium range as you can see and and it's a good you know with my camouflage and with the saw I have been able to control the the top middle of the map which is a really critical area so I'm doing my best just to do that but again not not exposing my head to any headshots up at the crest of the hill uh, I don't want to get sniped or anything like that now, uh, I probably could have, should have uh, called down this ordinance and shared it with a teammate. You know, that really is the best idea. If you have a power weapon already and you have an ordinance prepared to drop, you don't want to waste that ordinance. Um, the best thing to do is call it down and share it with a friend, a teammate, you know, let them use that power weapon. And then you can continue to accrue a new ordinance because as long as I'm sitting here on this uh, ordinance, I'm not going to get a new one. And the trouble with that is that... Um, you know, I probably could have earned a whole new ordinance by this time because I scored a lot of points since I actually earned that ordinance. And then the trouble here is I actually do finally call it down and then I promptly get killed. And so, I mean, it, it really is like a catch-22. You know, I call down, I finally bother to call down that beam rifle and then I'm just killed anyway. So I should have called it down in the first place and by now I would have had, a, you know, a whole other ordinance ready for me. So I, I, I come back here trying to recover my power weapons here, but somebody else on my team has already grabbed that beam rifle. That's fine. My saw's still there, and that's really my weapon of choice anyway. So I'm going to keep working with the saw and uh, continue to get a, several kills. So I want to make sure I've covered all of my strategies for the red side here. You know, make sure that you're controlling this the, the top of the hill as best as possible here. That's absolutely critical. Use the cover as best as you can. Uh, you know, watch out for the Pelican because the Pelican can be really the best position for the blue players. And the Pelican can really do some damage to anybody who is up here on this hill. Uh, the Pelican has excellent visibility onto this hill and the, and the, the open area that approaches the hill. So you don't want to allow the blue team to control that Pelican. You got to be careful to make sure that you don't let them control the Pelican, whatever you do. That's absolutely critical. Uh, I haven't really touched too much on vehicles in this particular game because I didn't really use them significantly. But make sure to play smart with the vehicles because the vehicles can really swing the balance of power in this game. Especially the uh, the mech unit and the banshees can be very, very powerful, very devastating. So you want to make sure to use them uh, very wisely. Don't uh, jeopardize those vehicles. Don't uh, be overly aggressive with the vehicles and put them in a situation 
where they can be easily destroyed. You know, find find areas where you know you can kind of protect your vehicles and and still kind of uh, poke out and get kills when necessary or take down you know overly aggressive opponents. But don't be overly aggressive yourself when it comes to the vehicles on this map because if you do, the vehicles are going to be destroyed pretty quickly and it's really going to end up being a waste of time. Now here I'm controlling the Pelican, uh, but this can be a very dangerous position because uh, you are really exposed to a lot of areas on the blue side of the map. So you got to be careful about pushing all the way up to the Pelican if you're on the red team because that can be a dangerous play there. Well, I uh, hope I was able to give you at least a few tips and tricks, a few ideas for how to approach this uh, game type on this map from the red side. Please leave some comments. Let me know if you thought the video was helpful and what I could do to improve. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Add the video to your favorite. Share it with your friends. This is Halo4Tutor signing out. I'll see you next time.